Hi, I'm Ross, here with Bill and Clint. Welcome back to Theologies. Appreciate y'all listening. Today is Rockology. Rockology. Well, well, we're going to talk about everything rock and music related. We are so stoked about this. We spent the last five, ten minutes uh, listening to great music and making fun of We don't actually of- have to leave the 80s. To have an amazing okay. Movie. What did I tell you before this started? I know if you, you, if you me. get you're caught, not the boss if you get a start, like stuck in the eighties, you're not the boss. I'm cut. I understand that. I'm just saying, there's more to music than the eighties. Okay, not, for not everyone much. that's listening, not Clint is Clint is a sorry, chi- but there's not a lot. What are you saying? There's not a lot outside the eighties. Not a lot. Okay. Well, that's one of the points I'm going to bring up a little bit later in the show, but <laughs> the elitism, <laughs> the elitism of of, oh, of '80s kids. Oh yeah, but okay. But all, all kidding aside, though, it's funny because my parent and I and I've told both of you this that my I, I grew up listening to the Stones, the yeah, Be- the Beatles, impressive. Floyd, you know, on vinyl, the originals, you know, and a lot of those are actually in my wife and my home right now. Uh, my dad would put on like a an record. actual like you've got a record player with the vinyls. Oh that, yeah, I, I've got a Marantz. That's... I've got a Marantz, a thousand dollar Marantz amp plugged up to some crazy speakers uh, from like 1970. Uh, that's impressive. Yeah, so uh, my my dad would make breakfast and then he would put on a record and he would take a nap and I used to listen to uh, I used to listen to these records and just fell in love with them. Now the issue. With older people. Do you know you can use Claymore wire for speakers? I actually did know that. Just you know. I didn't, but yeah. Okay, good to know. Yeah, Yeah. if you know a guy. Old people stuff right there. If you know a guy. (laughs) I may or may not have spools of Claymore wire. (laughs) Yeah. I don't. Uh, Just the the wire. Just the wire. Yeah. Maybe the clackers. Yeah. Uh, So so anyway, so that's how I got my intro to music as a kid, and then, you know, through through time, you know, like that progressed, oh, you yeah. know, and, and it's still progressing to this day. There's a lot of garbage we've got to filter out, in my opinion, uh, that doesn't necessarily count as music. But hey, oh, yeah. to each to each their own. No, I'll, rap, no, not rap, not rap would be one of those. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna rap would be one of those. I'm, Just, I'm down taking with a hard, No, I got issues. No. I'm good with rap. Okay, yeah. yeah, and that's what I was telling you. Like when my, when I'm around my parents, like. We could be listening, like we could be listening to um, Dion's "Run Around Sue," mm-hmm. and then next would be some old school Jay Z or something. Like, what are you listening to? It's like, I mean, Beethoven could be on next. They don't understand. You, if all you do is follow Rick Rubin, you're gonna have the most diverse, eclectic music style. That guy's crazy. He's amazing. Right? Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. And he like records everything. He's produced in an, everybody in an airstream behind his house. He's produced everybody. Oh, I know. Yeah, him and Jimmy Iovine. Oh, did mm-hmm. you see that? The Dr. Dre, uh, Iovine, Jimmy Iovine uh, documentary on. Huh. It's it's exceptional. I want to ask. Start off the questions with Bill. Yep. I'm gonna give you kind of a shitty question. Top two artists. Go. Yeah, how do, break it down into decades. No, top two would for me one would be you two, just okay. because that's my. And this is in the rock genre, right? We're staying inside yeah, rock. Yeah, but we okay. yeah. If we want to, if we no, want to, rockology. Go. Let's stay inside rock. Okay, let's. I'm good with that. God, it's tough after that. I mean, for me, there's. Is you two really rock? I they think got I, parts. I mean, there's rock in in some. Listen, of the Edge music. can play. I mean, I mean, yeah. from a from a, a musical capacity perspective, we got to keep this moving. We're losing them with U two. And to answer your question, U two is rock. I think it falls under garbage rock. But I'm pretty, wow, pretty that's sure. Pretty strong. Okay, so next. I was. Okay. I don't have. I was more curious. I'll do. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll just go off off cue. I'm do U two. David Coverdale, White Snake. I'll throw Journey out there. Journey, great, great. So, little trivia on Journey: uh, amazing band, all accomplished musicians. When I walked down here to record this show, I was listening to Santana, right? Yeah. Do you know that Neil Schoen toured with Santana as a 15-year-old? Really? The lead guitarist for Journey toured with Did Santana at 15 years old. That's how wow. good that dude is. Wow. I saw them together, Journey and Santana, at the Texas Jam in '80 or '81. Wow. That's a legit concert. Crazy. Clint, top two artists. Shoot. Uh, it's really hard. Meatloaf. Meatloaf. For one. Okay. He's, 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 he's great. It's amazing. Uh, I, I would tell you from a, a, <laughs> a, a rock, man, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, it's tough. If st- Let me ask you this. Concerts. Top two concerts? Well, s- I mean, Sabbath. I mean, oh, I mean, you saw Sabbath. I may or, depends if my mom's listening to this or not. I oh, may okay. or may not have. Okay. Well, we'll exclude her from. Yeah. 
every, every uh, major uh, <laughs> yeah. site. She doesn't know how to press play on it anyway, so we're good. I'm a huge Randy Rhodes fan. He's I, I was in a – I was. Yeah, I tell you what, Def Leppard, man, those dudes are still cranking it. Uh, is one arm r- drummer. One arm drummer. Yeah, a cor- rectus Corvette. And, yeah, that, yeah. and, and it's a funny story it's because a- any anything because he stayed with the band. Oh yeah. Any anything after that uh, after that incident after he recovered and started recording again, notice the the, the drum there's beats. Some sim- there's some <laughs> some very but those simple. Those dudes are still killing it, man. Yeah. I will tell you who else is still killing it, and this is a cool story. My baseball coach for a brief time was Frank Beard, who is the drummer for ZZ Top. He oh, lived in our neighborhood. That's pretty uh, legendary. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, I had him sign uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had the tape. I had Recycler on tape. And my favorite song back then was Burger Man. But God dang, just, just a few minutes. I was listening to Lagrange, man. Like that, just that intro. Yeah. And you know that uh, Dusty and well, Frank's not a Frank moved here early, but they're actually from Irving. And, Bi- really? and Billy Gibbons is from Houston. And uh, they got hooked up. And uh, I think that there may have been. Some Dude, can you imagine? Listen, if. If ZZ Top is part of your baseball team, they could have the coolest way to tell you to go to the next base. They just flip the guitar. That's, right. That's how you <laughs> yeah. go. That's how you yeah. take the base. Yeah. Burr, and they flip yeah. it and keep Well, playing. Billy and Dustin came to uh, – or Dusty came to a bunch of our games. That'll mess up the other team, though. That's oh, good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we That's had, absolutely yeah, yeah. fantastic. Because, they, 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 you know, Billy's a big car guy. and He, he showed up in his coupe. Right, he had like a thir- he has like a roadster, like a thirty-two. You four. said this stuff like, well, you know, no, I didn't know that. Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't know, know because he's a huge car guy. Well, I know, but you know him, like we know of him, but you yeah. know him. I, okay, for the record, I don't know Billy Gibbons like that, but like for a brief time in my childhood, they were they were around. You were but coached I thought that was a cool ZZ story. Top. How do you get coached by anybody after that? Yeah, you yeah. don't. Yeah. yeah, you're just like that. Ah, I peaked. Yeah, I peaked. <laughs> I've, I've peaked. My at athletic career. Elvis Presley was my base coach yeah. and Pop Warner. So yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not playing anymore because everything yeah. else is going to suck after. So that. what about you, Ross? You know, my favorite artists are my, my top rock band is a band called The Strokes. Um, y'all probably yeah, no, that's rock. Yeah, that's yeah. Rock. Those guys um, with their songwriting ability. Uh, I was going to ask what you liked Ju- about them Julian so Casablanca uh, is the lead singer and has written all their music. Um, their main hit that everyone probably knows mm-hmm. is last night, but like they've got just their whole catalog. It's one of those for me. I could put on, you say like, oh, okay, a good record's one that you can play straight through. I could play their entire catalog straight through and flawlessly play air guitar to every song. That's a big deal. I was, a lot of people, I was the air guitar champion of the Pacific fleet for a couple of years. Big deal. <laughs> I can see that. But uh, the, one of the things I think it's interesting that you just said, I think is kind of something, you know, we, this, when you grade like great rock, bands you said you know they're songwriting they're like holistic right sure like who's doing all of it and who'd be doing it if no one else was watching yeah those are two things you look at like hey do they do their own stuff how produced are they Mm -hmm. and would they do it if no one else is watching right and there's dudes you just straight up go man henry rollins would play in a parking lot just to keep from ripping people's faces off at work right and so I love artists that, you know, there's a therapeutic genesis to kind of when they start playing, why they play all this other stuff. And, and that's why I, th- I think the 80s were such an interesting time because, man, it was just kind of like take the lid off. Yeah, and, there was a lot of jo- there was a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, progression in the 80s. And ex- in- excess may have been another way to say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the other thing that is lost on the 80s is, that, you know, there's all the – hair band and metal and all that going on right but there's a whole lot of influx oh, of n- new not new age new agey but new music that has that uh, came over from the pesh mode and yeah, those, and, oh yeah and yeah. that's where i yeah. cut a lot of my teeth yeah. in the 80s I, I i i i listened to probably your mainstream rock folks but then i also was into the pesh mode cult all yeah, a yeah, cool. L- yeah. lot yeah. of these other guys. That's one thing I think makes you, you you two really unique is that one, their endurance. They've just been around for a long time. Yeah, they've stayed two, the test they, of time. They haven't slowed down a bit, mm-hmm. and they're kind of the master integrators. Like you watch how in tribute to something they've heard, they integrate it into their own sound. Sure. And you can tell when someone's integrating someone else's sound into their sound, you can tell when they're doing it to try to sound cooler or doing it because they were inspired by it. And that's something that, sure. that I'll, I'll give, give you. That. I'll give you two. You know, yeah, for. my second one would be the Shins. Um, 
and the shins also have a couple offshoot bands uh but uh, broken bells is the other one y'all probably haven't listened to them too much but another great band with the with the, with a ton of great songs on their catalog i have seen both of them live i would say though that my favorite live concert would either have to be eric clapton and i saw yeah, him a few years ago at the ac i was front row uh and the second one would have to be a band. They're Americana Bluegrass called Oak Roll Medicine Show. Oh, they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. I was a, I was an early mover on those guys. Um, those dudes are so talented. So I'll tell you a funny story about that. I got to go backstage with them because uh, I was actually home on leave from Afghanistan. And Catch Secor, who is the lead singer, said, hey, man, write your address down and, and uh, we can correspond. Uh, we wrote letters for years. Really? Yeah, me and wow, Catch, I still cool. have those letters. I would not have seen that coming. No, man. Just because of recall. Phenomenal guy. <laughs> just like, hey, does he remember where he was? No, man. I, I tell you what. That's I, really I gave impressive. him my address. He obviously didn't give me his, but he wrote his, and inside the letter on there, he said, you can write back to this address, and I'll That's get really cool. And uh, cool. Uh, just the nicest guys, great band, very friendly, and their music is it's just exceptional. Dude, Metallica, man. Metallica was a big one for me, too. If you're in the late 80s, playing high school football there are two things that were on your pregame mixtape which yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what a mixtape is later no, you probably know you yeah. had you had the theme the soundtrack to rocky four you know and then you had metallica yeah or you had one I mean, well you everyone had, you goes had, through phases too where they're, oh, yeah. they're like this is me yeah, like i went through a black me. sabbath phase sure. yeah i went through uh i went through a black sabbath phase i went through a pink floyd uh phase i went through a led zeppelin phase mm -hmm. and like those phases like and I went through, like, Metallica is just, I got pulled over going 110, completely yeah. sober on the way to my ranch on, yeah. a, on a back road. Metallica is a controlled substance. I, 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 could, I, I, I you, could not slow Metallica down. Metallica S&M, when they played the San Francisco film, like, I can only listen to that in doses. That that was the album I was oh, listening yeah. to. The cop came up, he's like, dude, like, I, I, I he's like, how fast were you going? I, I had to catch up to you at a stoplight. I'm like, dude, I was, James Hetfield's killing me right now, man. That's that's funny. I, I never listened to Metallica. Yeah, well, I, I, I just put, never did. I, and I had friends that did. Sure. But I, for some reason, I never... And that's the thing with music. The taste, it's not... It. I wouldn't say it's acquired, because for me, it was like instant. But like with some people, it's like, yeah, not for me. But at the same time, we could have... We can find... But what it does for you is the same. Mm -hmm. That's the cool thing, is like... It's, it's kind of like... Uh, as long, you know, you, you get in this like food. Is it, as long as you're getting the same stuff, it doesn't matter how it's styled. And if it produces the same level of this, like, hey, what do you do to get motivated? Like, sure. What do you do? Like, I I fell in love with rap because rap is in a lot of ways, especially in its kind of early stages, was not that different than country. Highly emotional storytelling. Oh uh, wow! All yeah. this other. I mean, there's a lot of there's some parallels. There's there. some absolute yeah. parallels, and that's why you see a lot of. You know, you see Nelly and uh, and Tim McGraw, and you see a lot of these. Yeah, uh, there's some crossover you look at, there. If you if you watch the whole kind of Aerosmith and Run DMC, it was really the first rock. <laughs> Bill rap. and I were talking about that Dude, before you incredible. got down the, here. The documentary on it's amazing, right? Yeah, I saw that. And, and you're yeah. Steven Tyler going, I don't understand. No, and then all of a sudden no. he was just like, but you see, oh, Steven, I'm, I'm in now. Steven Tyler now singing country. Yeah, but but uh, the, sure. the the Perry, uh, I mean the the, the musicians kind of. Always yeah, got. I think there's a mutual level of respect, and then it's just a collaboration. Like, hey, man, what can we do? You know, and when they put out Walk This Way, it's like Rum DNC was like, hey, man, let me go over that track. I'll tell you what's interesting is in my just watching some of these documentaries, it's like singers kind of sometimes get it last unless they're songwriters too. Yeah. The musicians kind of get it. Yeah. Because if you're playing bass, regardless of what genre, you're playing this, like you can see someone do something going, oh, man, like wait. Yeah. And most people trace their, you know, if you really want to talk about like, who everybody's deferential to when it comes to guitar. You, you look at like uh, blues, blues guitars. Oh man, guitars it's where it all started. At, I mean, Twelve right. bar blues, baby. Sure. You mm -hmm. know, uh, country right. came out of that. Everything came out of that. Everything that we're listening to today originated mm -hmm. with twelve bar, uh, twelve bar blues. I think you brought up a good point in that the s singers, unless they're a songwriter too or a musician themselves, it's the reason the musicians appreciate all different kinds is because th they may not like to listen to right country all the time but they appreciate the craft that goes in and they could probably pick out elements like oh, i enjoy that you watch like, a guitarist talk about a banjo player and they're like hold on look at those look at the speed of those fingers yeah stuff. Like, right. yeah that's why i think guys like dave Grohl, foo yeah. fighters i mean it, it, one they're incredible mm -hmm. and one when you look at the longevity and endurance stuff like that but dave Grohl's such a talented Wasn't guy dave man. Grohl the drummer for yes. nirvana yeah okay yeah. there's so much oh, yeah. 
of this oh, yeah. going on in the industry too that like that collaboration that hey let's bring people into the room that might not be us mm -hmm. uh happens is because like music is such an eclectic it's such an ongoing evolving if you want to listen to really great like listen to dave Grohl interviews one he's an accomplished musician on multiple different instruments but he's also a songwriter he's also an amazing dad some of the documentaries on them are just hilarious and you know the dude broke his ankle and came back out and finished a concert just switched instruments. Who, uh, uh, okay, I saw 2 Chains, uh, a rapper in concert, and I was kind of in the back, but I couldn't see the guy was in a wheelchair the whole time. I was like, oh, man, 2 Chains is in a wheelchair. 2 Chains you know? is bringing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, to finish up, who's your favorite guitarist? Wow, there's... That's even harder. That's even that's more even harder difficult answer. because on one side, or, uh, I would say Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay. Um, that's a whole different genre. Sure, sure. Uh, then you look at Eric Clapton, who's really a whole different genre, really, mm -hmm. and then Stevie in a lot of ways. Just yeah, well, he invented his genre, his genre based on uh, Muddy Waters and all that music that was coming right. out of South, the South of the Mason Dixon line, mainly Alabama, Mississippi, uh, back in the 70s. I'm, but I'm, I'm intrigued by uh, acoustic. When, when yeah. somebody can play oh, buddy. acoustic, well, yeah, and, and, and for some reason, that's just more mesmerizing to me. Well, remember, I showed you the video John Butler wonderful. trio, yes. the, uh, 11 string, the 11 string guitar, not even 12 string. Like, who knows when that thing broke? Right. You look at Nuno Betancourt with Extreme, and like, if you ever watch the Valkyrie, like, how fast is and there's different qualities to playing guitar, like speed of you know, finger fret. I tell you, he's an amazing guitarist, is um, country, uh, Paul, uh, Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley is huh. an unbelievable guitar player. Yeah, I've seen him. Did you see that? Uh, the uh, when he sat down with oh, I can't even remember all the names. Like La not Lars. Um, he sat down with like six or seven very accomplished uh, studio quality right. guitarists and played the Game of Thrones intro. Um, did you see that I video? Uh -uh. We'll have to watch that afterwards. But uh, but yeah, uh, he was there and, and he he did very well. Um, so who's your guy? Shoot, I, um, well I grew up when. Eddie Van Halen was kind of hitting his prime. Sure. Yeah, yeah. When he was turning around, when he was doing stuff that they, he would turn around, and he'd play with his back to the audience. Right, right. right. And uh, but I mean, you know, Zach Wilde or you know, Black Label. You know, Zach. He cut his. I say Zach like I know him. I don't yeah, know. right. You know, <laughs> you know dear friend, friend. Dear Sheriff, friend. Sheriff Waver's got some interesting because you know they all lived over there in uh, Dow Warrington Gardens. So he's got mm -hmm. some pretty funny stories over there. Yeah. But you look at it. I tell you, he was an amazing prince. You you watch Prince play guitar. You watch. Oh yeah. You watch Prince. I tell you one of the coolest things. You watch Prince Super Bowl, and they talk about and Prince is one of these guys. It's kind of genre defying as well. And the producer of the Super Bowl, the Miami Super Bowl, is a torrential rainstorm. And, you know they got these dancers and stuff. And the guy goes, Prince, you know it's raining. And he's like, Yes. <laughs> and he goes, uh, Do you got any questions? You still feel comfortable? He's like, Yeah, I feel comfortable. Do you got any questions? He goes, Yeah. Can you make it rain harder? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man. And they just went out there and just crushed it. Yeah. Right? Mine would have to be the Randy Roach, kind of like I alluded to earlier. Mark Knopfler. Um, sure. Probably, I mean, obviously I'm with you, Bill, that I think it's such a hard thing. Like my, my, I hate when people, hey, man, what kind of music are you into? I don't know, bro. Good music. Yeah, Tuesday. I, yeah, yeah. Was it Tuesday or yeah. Wednesday? Yeah. Like, did you want to listen to Kendrick Lamar or you know, did you the, want to listen the, to Beethoven? The, the, right. the kind of the brains behind Creed. You know, Scott Stapp, powerful vocalist, but the the guitar player, like that guy's pretty amazing, and, and and he's kind of adored, and he writes songs, and you look at, you can look at dudes that man, they be playing that they they be playing the guitar wherever anybody let them. It yeah, Creed, those guys it are amazing. Creed kind of like the McDonald's of rock. Yeah, right? I was good. I was. Nickelback. Yeah, it's like uh, that's Nickel, that's it's like Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna hope to end on Creed, man. I didn't want to get to the nineties. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hootie, Hootie the Blowfish. Uh, yeah. Hey guys, everyone, thank you so much for listening in. I appreciate all the viewership. We're going over the numbers today. Y'all are amazing. Rock on. Yeah, rock on, that's and we'll so see y'all next time. Peace.